All right, that shit should be going. Be live, okay. What is going on, fanatics? It's me and my main guy, Akeem. If you don't know him, get to know him. We decided to come on live real quick just to showcase and share our opinions on um, what the bill should do now, right? As of right now, it seems like we have one option and one option only if we're trying to trade up. But Akeem, what's going on, babe? The bills to do now. What's going on, big dog? What's going on? Everything's good, man. So um, how do you feel about the Jets, you know, trading up to number, number three? Man, it, it, I, I woke up. I mean, I was asleep. My phone was off. I went to sleep kind of late, about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I wake up. I turn my phone on, and I hear I hear the buzz. I hear the buzz. Jets move up to the number three pick. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not I, – I, I was like, wow, because we was on – it was reported that we was talking with the Colts all week or whatever the case may be, but – for whatever reason, we didn't make the move. So I was, I was very interested to see what the Jets gave up exactly to move up to the number three pick. And then when I saw them give up their first round six pick, two uh, second round picks, I believe the 37th and the, and the 49th pick overall, and then they gave up the 2019 second round pick, I was like, wow. I was, I was shocked because me personally, I don't think that was much. I don't think that was that much. So I was shocked at not necessarily them moving up to three, but I was shocked on what they had to give up to three, especially all the picks we had or we have coming into this 2018 draft. So you feel that the Bills didn't uh, didn't offer, or what are your thoughts as far as if the Bills actually attempted to trade up or not? And do well, they actually think that they're actually going to trade up now? Well, it's still up in the air. You 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 never know until until you actually know, right? But if I'm thinking what the Jets gave up, we could have easily gave up those picks, man. <laughs> I think we could have offered a better package to the Colts than what to the than what the Jets gave up. And being the Jets giving up what they gave up, and we didn't offer those type of picks I'm, I'm i'm all of a sudden thinking hey we might stay at 12 here man we po it's quite possible we might stay at 12 it's quite possible because let me let me call a spade a spade here i was never convinced that any of these qbs were generational quarterbacks i know that is is a possibility that some of these quarterbacks can pan out uh, pan out good, but I don't think this is like the 2004, 2004 NFL draft where you had Eli Manning and Ben Roethlisberger and and, and Philip Rivers. In my heart of hearts, I don't believe any of those guys will be any of those guys. But the fr the way we was the way our franchise has moved lately the last few years, I was all on board on trying to get one of these guys moving up and trying to get one of these guys. But now that the move is made, the price tag has went up. The price tag has gone up. And if we didn't make the move with the Colts now, who's to say we're going to give up even more to make a move with the Giants or the Browns? I personally think the price tag, it never changed. In my opinion, it was always the same. You know, us having to give up a couple first round picks, maybe a first round pick next year and a couple other picks along the way as well. But you said something that's really key. And I'm pretty sure there's many fans who feel how you feel, is that if you were never high on the guys to begin with, you wouldn't want the Bills to you know, trade up and, and give away all these assets. Now, if you're high on some guys and think that they could very well be some, you know, like generational talents, then it's a no-brainer. You got to go get them. So I think that, yes, there are a few or a couple that you can go up in there and get, right? Now, as far as moving up to, um, you know, to the um, 
Giants, I made a tweet, as we already know, a couple months ago, which, you know, what I feel that the uh, Bills might have to give up. Many felt that it was a lot. But looking at what the Jets just, just did, they gave up 600 more points than what the draft chart shows, right? So that's, even though it's only two two second round picks this year and one second round pick next year, as far as the point chart, they gave up 600 more points. So we're going to have to give up a lot if we're going to move up. I personally think we can't keep on massaging this quarterback position, man. Eventually, we're going to have to, you know, pull the trigger. Eventually. Eventually. So why didn't we pull, so why didn't we pull the trigger with the Colts? Why didn't we, we, we was on the phone reportedly all week. Reportedly. Why didn't we pull the trigger with the Colts? Again, who knows what the Colts wanted to do? You see what I'm saying? Because, again, maybe the Colts were dead set on, we want to have these two players. Now, we can still possibly get one of those two players and still rack up a couple of extra picks. Maybe the Colts didn't want to trade from – well, from three to twelve, maybe that's probably what it was. Remember, it takes two to tango, big homie. If they didn't, me personally, if I'm going to look at a, a at a Mercedes, -Benz, I am going to look at a Nissan Altima first. <laughs> if I'm if I'm headstrong with a Mercedes Benz, I'm going to look at the Mercedes Benz. Why pick up the phone? Why talk to us in the first place if you know you don't want to trade out? Of the top ten, me personally, me personally, me personally, I feel that Brandon Bean and company didn't want to give up those picks. I believe Brandon Bean and company. I, I have to, I have to sway that way a little bit because we had the capital. We had the capital to give up a better package than what the Jets gave them. What's the? You didn't want to fall out the top ten to twelve. We could have gave a better package, man. And for us not giving up that better package, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure anymore, man. I, me personally, right now, I'm leaning towards staying at 12. No, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it really depends on who falls, right? But again, if everything that the Bills have done thus far, in my opinion, shows they're trying to get a franchise quarterback. If not, why get rid of Tyrod? You see what I'm saying? So you get rid of Tyrod, you add a pick. You get rid of Cordy, you add a pick. You get rid of Sammy and all these and Dar and, and uh, uh, Darius, you add these picks. You're doing this move, in my opinion, and by you always coming out and saying you have to get a franchise quarterback. We've been spoiled in Carolina with Cam Newton. We've never really had to look at the quarterback position. We understand how important it is to get that franchise quarterback. So by all the talks and all the actions, it seems like they're trying to get that franchise quarterback. So, yes, you could get lucky and hit on a guy at 12. Uh, Big Ben, I think, was 11, right? So you could get lucky and wait at 12 and get the Bakers or the Josh Allens if people think that, you know, he might be the franchise. That could very well happen. Or if you think that Rosen is hands down – the best quarterback in arguably two, three years, you have to at least attempt to go get that guy, man. You have to. Well, see, see, I, I take I take it a different way. Getting a franchise quarterback is, is agreed upon. We all know you have to get that franchise guy. It is not a proven theory that you have to move up in the top three to get a franchise guy. Right. How, how, how do we know? That Brandon Bean don't have his certain sights set on a guy that could be the franchise guy. A franchise guy is is someone that we love. There's someone that we think can be the guy. We don't necessarily have to move up. It doesn't say anywhere in the rule books that you have to move up at, to the top three to select this franchise guy. Brandon Bean always said, we talk about, you spoke about all this accumulating of picks. Brandon Bean always said he's trying to build for now and the future. 
being that the Jets, if you want to use this 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 draft chart, in my opinion, the draft chart is a little overrated. It may not be overrated in, in NFL standards or to the GM standards. If the New York Jets went 600 points over that draft chart, what the hell you think we're going to have to do now to move up to the number two slot? We're going to mortgage possibly our future to move up into the number into the number two spot and more and brandon b specifically said he's trying to build for now and the future i, I get that but the, the mortgage in the future thing is the most overrated thing right now in in the nfl man because yo the draft as far as as um how much you have to pay these guys isn't how it was four or five years ago right so you can mess around and give up a whole bunch of picks and still hit on because again in every draft you might hit what one or two guys out of the entire draft so yes it's you have you have better better options or you have more options to maybe hit on a guy but i don't necessarily think that that you'll be mortgaged in the future because again this year is a year of the draft right we have a hundred million dollars in cap next year. So the picks that we would most likely lose this year and maybe even next year, we can use the that cap in free agency and pick up a, a whole bunch of dudes next year. So it doesn't necessarily mean that that it's either we draft or nothing. It's you draft who you think is the franchise quarterback, because it looks like next year's crop is looking more like the 2013 crop. So it's either you're going to get a guy this year or maybe have to wait until 2020 and ride with AJ, Nate Peterman, and whatever rookie you want to draft this year. Now, now, now. It could very well be that they're very high on a Mason Rudolph. And maybe they feel like that could be the franchise guy. Let's wait at 12 or maybe even 22 and we'll ride with the Mason Rudolph. Or there's been multiple reports. It's been getting real hot around Kyle Laletta. So maybe they feel, yo, we can rock with Kyle Laletta, AJ, and Nate Peterman, and let's see what we have in there and still keep all our picks. So uh, trust me, I'm not opposed to, to keeping all the picks. But I wouldn't be afraid to, to uh, unload four, five, six picks if we felt real strongly about a quarterback that we deem could very well be that change of franchise type player. Now, honestly, the way I'm looking at it right now, I don't see us making a move before the draft. I really don't see us making a move to to move up and relinquishing all them picks before the draft. I'm, a, I'm at the point right now is where I have to see what happens. I have to see what happens after the five or six pick. Then when you get into the Raiders, you get into Tampa, you get into those Arizona and those picks, it could be more possible we trade up at that point after we see who goes where. But I, I really don't see us mortgaging all of those picks. I, I, I don't see it. Brandon Bean has been aggressive throughout the whole offseason. But... Yet, he wasn't as aggressive in mortgaging all those picks. So, why all of us aggressive all season, but all of a sudden, at, at a standstill, with giving up all giving up picks? It has to be for a reason. But again, I mean, that's, that's really assuming that, that, um, that the Colts actually wanted to move down that far, right? We're assuming that we... We offered those picks or didn't offer those picks. And the Colts, you know, it, like, again, I am a believer that based off of what the GM said after the trade, you know, the, uh, the GM for the Colts, they said they already had some guys in mind. They felt we can possibly still get those guys at six instead of three, and we're still able to add a couple more picks onto that. So it could very well be the Colts are like, yo, we good. I know you got picks. But we got some guys that we might want. You know, we're sold on these guys. We don't want to move down, what, nine slots. So, yeah, we get a couple of first-round picks and a couple of second-round picks, but we'll be good right here and just take 
what the Jets given us. That could very well be what their thought process was. So it doesn't necessarily mean that Bean didn't, you know, didn't offer them that. Maybe they did, and they say, nah, we don't want to move down that far. That could have been the option, too. Anything's possible. We, or we all just speculate. We all agree to disagree. Hey, let us know what you think. You agree with Pierre? You agree with myself? Pierre, obviously. So, obviously, you don't care what the Jets did. You still would give up whatever you have to give up to, to go up and, and to the number one or number two slot with the Giants to get the quarterback of our liking, correct? I would, yeah. I would. Oh, yeah. The main reason oh, why is because I'm sick and tired of toying around with this position, thinking we can outsmart the system. Let's just wait for the guy. We've been waiting for the guy for 20 years now. You know what I'm saying? That waiting for the guy ain't working. Go get your guy, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're sold on the guy, go get him for once, man. Right? We've been through this, been through, down this road many a times. 2004, I keep on bringing it up, many a times. We waited for the guy. Let's wait. Let's wait. Instead of saying, yo, let's go get our guy. Now, you may not think that these guys are the guys from, uh, you know, the Eli's, the Ben's, and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the rivers they're not they're not again that's your opinion many feel that yo these guys are on par so again who knows right we've already made the comparison to rosen you know possibly being a matt ryan type they they're very similar matt ryan with number three and matt ryan you can make an argument change the falcons you know whole franchise so sometimes you got to take the risk now Again, for those that may have forgotten, I got ridiculed for this. And again, let me bring it right back up to you. Two months ago, I tweeted that the Giants makes the most logical sense if we were to give up 21 and 22, which that changed, of course. So 12 and 22, the the second round pick, one second round pick this year, one fourth round pick this year, and then next year's first round and a fourth round, right? The Giants would give us back the second overall and a third round pick this year. If that trade were to happen, again, I'll repeat, both of our first round picks this year, our second round pick, I mean, one second round pick this year, one fourth round pick this year, and then a first and a fourth next year. The Giants give us the second overall and the third round pick this year. If this trade were to go down, it sounds like a lot, but if this were to go down, we would have a draft pick in every single round up to round five. I have a pick in round one, pick in round two, three, four, and five. So again, we wouldn't necessarily be mortgaged in the future because we're still picking up draft picks every single round. We already have a fifth round, I mean, a, a sixth round pick as well. So we would let, literally have a draft pick in the first six rounds. And all we would lose is a first and a fourth next year. But again, we have the $100 million in cap where we wouldn't necessarily need to be so gun ho with the draft next year. So again, take the risk, take the plunge. If you are, are in love with a guy, you go get that guy, man. What, what are we here waiting for? Listen, <laughs> I would, I, I understand. I would take that risk and take that plunge if they're if they're really in love with a guy. If they honestly see a a a, a, a next top tier quarterback for the next ten years that can be that franchise guy. But let's 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 look at let's look at who's out there. First of all. In my opinion, that third round pick that you're talking about is out the question. If I'm Gettleman, if I'm putting myself in the giant shoes, I, we lost Jets making that move. We lost leverage. If I'm the, I'm the Giants, I'm not giving up no other picks, no third round pick. I'm giving up one pick if I'm going against somebody. That one pick, and that's my second round pick. All right. No, that's number one. Number two. Let's look at what let's look at what's out there. You you probably think that there's similarities between the 2004 draft and this 2018 draft coming up. Josh Josh Rosen is the the best pure passer in the draft. That's my opinion. He's the best pure passer in the draft. We are uh, we looked at his tape, his USC tape when he played against USC. Some of them throws he made was very good throws. A lot of NFL quality throws that man has made. But we also have to take a 
Yeah, the three aspect. You comparing Josh Rosen to Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan didn't have those those red flags of a knee brace on his knee for whatever reason. He didn't have that red flag of a shoulder. He didn't have a red that red flag of multiple concussions. We're talking about possible damaged goods in a Josh Rosen. Possible damaged goods. He's he's purposely sat out games because he didn't want to mortgage his future. <laughs> he's had multiple concussions. He has a, that knee brace. He has a lot of uh, uh, possible injuries. I don't know if all them picks are willing to sacrifice for a guy that's possibly damaged goods. You're talking about a Sam Donald. Sam Donald, he doesn't make good good, good decisions consistently. He makes good decisions on one play, and then the next play, we're looking at Sam Donald like, what the hell was you thinking? What was your thought process behind making sense that you have made? Now, we're looking at a Josh Allen. Josh Allen, he has the highest ceiling, but he has a lot of mechanics to work with. He has a lot of, he has a lot of things that you have to still coach, footwork, mechanics. He has the ceiling. He has the talents. His ceiling is very high. But having that having that high ceiling doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come to fruition. So when comparing the 2004 draft, Eli was special coming out of college, man, his last year. Ben Roethlisberger was special coming out. Uh, Phil Rivers was special coming out. These guys were special coming out of the NFL draft in 2004. All these, none of these guys are, 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 are cinches. All these guys had their struggles their last year in college. So to say that there, there, there is a 2014, 2004 draft comparison is mind body. The thing that's comparable is the number, is the names. The number of quarterbacks that can possibly be first round picks. That's what I see in comparison. But as far as talent, it's no comparison between this draft and the 2004 draft, man. So me personally, if we wanted to get somebody, if we wanted to do something, we would have did it already. I feel like I almost feel like we was in the club dancing. We was dancing with one of the finest girls in the club. And then we left to circulate the club. And then when we came back to the girl, the girl was gone. The other guy swooped up <laughs> and took her home. And that's what the New York Jets was. The next New York Jets was that girl to swoop up, take our girl from underneath our eyes. And now he's, now they're going home with that girl, which I pick overall when we was talking to the Colts all week. Nah, so nah, nah, I'm, nah, I'm just, nah, nah, I'm, nah, I'm just nah, not sold, man. Nah, I'm, not sold. Is, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. What the analogy is, is that, you know, the girl in the club, we dance with the girl in the club. I'm like, yo, man, I can take you home, but I live all the way to hell up in California, right? We got to move out there. You got to move all the way to California, all the way to the West Coast with me, right? She like, you know what? I don't know. Let me think about it. We leave the club. Then the dude said, yo, you can come to my house. I live right down the street. You know what I'm saying? She's like, you know what? I'm going to probably ride with that because I don't got to go too far. I don't want to have to move and re relocate all the way to hell to the West Coast. I can just go around the corner and be good to go. So I get what you're saying. Right? And if, again, if you didn't feel strongly about these guys coming out, I get your angle, right? But many a guy... <laughs> including Eli, Phillip, and Ben, had issues coming out, man. They weren't sure thing locks coming out, but the same hype around those three guys are the same hype around Baker, Darnold, and, uh, and uh, Rosen. It's the same hype, right? These guys have similar traits. Rosen is arguably the purest passer out of Eli, Ben, and Rivers, right? Darnold, so... You can make the argument right now that Baker is the Phillip, Rosen is the Eli, and Darnold is the Ben. You can make that comparison, right? Uh, ben is known for being clutch. He's the clutch guy. That could very well be Darnold. Rosen is the pure passer. It's the Manning pedigree, 
right? And Philip, he's the feisty, he's the feisty quarterback that could very well be Baker. Again, they're 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 all all six of them are very talented. So now let's go back to the the main question that, that a lot of people don't like to hear, but I brought it back up again today. Say that the Giants called up and say, yo, Bill. Oh boy, I know where this is going. <laughs> and say, Bill, we're gonna be drafting Barkley at number two, man. Right? That's who we want. We want Barkley. We want the running back. Y'all want us to go to where? 12? I don't know if I'm going to go all the way down to 12 because I want to get my running back. The only way I'll do it is if you give me your running back. Would y'all do it? Running back and, of course, you know, some picks here and there. Would LaShawn McCoy become tradable in that situation? Oh, everybody's tradable. Everybody's tradable. No, no, no. If you were sold on a guy, I know you probably wouldn't do it because you're not sold on a guy, but if you were sold on a guy, which which many are, if you're sold on a guy and the Giants says, we were going to draft the running back, we want to win now, you give me McCoy 12 and 22 and, and maybe like a third round pick or something, and we'll go ahead and move down to 12. The fan in me, the fan in me would say no. If I'm putting myself in the GM shoes, if I'm in love with a guy, of course I would make that move if I'm in love with a guy. But my thing is, why would you want, if you can get a 21, 22-year-old Saquon Barkley for the next five to ten years, why would you want to get Shady McCoy and take on his $9 million contract for the next year or two? To me, I don't you think... You know what? You just actually sold my case. But go ahead. I keep on having you go. I, 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 I don't think... I, first of all, I don't think the Giants would do that. If the Giants want Saquon Barkley, the Giants is going to get Saquon Barkley. Number two, if we had... If we was thinking something like that, we would obviously... We would have to love a certain guy. So my thing is this. My thing is this. I don't think we love a certain guy. Because if we loved a certain guy, we would have gave up what we had to give up the trade with the Colts in the first place. I, don't, I, I still don't agree with that, though. Because, again, you're making it seem like the Colts wanted to move down that far. You know what I mean? That's but you're making, it, but you're, making it, you're making it seem like the Giants would want Shady McCoy. <laughs> so what's the difference? No, 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 no. There's no guarantee. It's no guarantee. No, 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 no. I didn't say that the Giants want McCoy. I brought up the option of if they wanted him. You're saying that the Colts didn't want to trade with or that the Bills don't want to or don't feel strongly about a guy because they would have just, you know, gave the Colts all those picks. I'm saying maybe the Colts didn't just want to trade down that far. Maybe that could very well be it. Do you see do you see what you do you see what Josh Rosen did with UCLA with the talent around him? They went five and five or six and five. So now all of a sudden you want to mortgage Shady McCoy, mortgage our weapon our, our biggest weapon, and leave Josh Rosen with what? Josh Rosen wasn't able to win enough games at UCLA with the weapons around him. So many people again. I get it, I get it. McCoy's a Hall of Famer. He's an amazing running back. The guy is elite. I get it. I absolutely get it. But are we sitting here saying that no other running back ever, ever in life will ever do what Shady can do, right? There's this running back class is deep as shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got Chubb. You got Michelle. You got the guy from um, Arizona State. We, we giving up. You got, it you doesn't got dice. You can easily draft a running back in the first round if you wanted to, or even the second. But, how, but let me ask you a question. Me, but, but how? But this running back is deep as shit. But we're not going to have the picks to get a running back because <laughs> we're going to give them to the Giants. Again, again, there's this is a running back deep class. You have Bell who went in the second. David Johnson who went in the third. Hunt who went in the third, Kamara, who went in the third. You can get a running back, dog. 
You can. You know dude, you dude. Can but dude, you, you, but see. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just said it. You want to have a guy paying him $9 million for one, maybe two years and not say, you know what? I'll take the risk losing him for one or two years and try to get our franchise guy. Come on, man. You're being married to the player and the name. You're being married to it. You know what I'm saying? This is fact. Not at all. I'm not at all. I'm not being married to the player. Number one, to, for me. Franchise quarterback. You want to lose him of getting franchise quarterback for a guy you only have for one or two more years. Come on, Akeem. You better. Come on. First of all, see. Uh, first of all, number one, I'm not married to any guy. Any you're talking about this deep ass running back class that's not going to matter because we're going to give up all of our picks to get to number two. So it doesn't matter how big or how deep this running back draft class is because if we give up all them picks, there is no way we're able to get any of these running backs in the first place. <laughs> We have a bunch of holes besides the running back position. We will have to use our last, we will have to use, hold on, we would have to use our last couple of picks, which would be fourth round or fifth round picks, to get linebackers, to get offensive linemen, to get a receiver, to get a D tackle. This deep running draft class doesn't mean shit if you've given up all your picks in the first place. It doesn't mean nothing. It really doesn't. So talk, talking about how deep this running back class is useless when, when, when you're talking about mortgaging our, our picks to begin with. So basically you're saying that the only way for us to move up is we have to give up both first, both seconds, and both thirds. Because you just said for the only picks we have left in the fourth and fifth round, we have to get the linebacker. So basically you're saying we got to give up the entire draft in order to move up. We would have to yeah. give, we would have to, we would definitely have to give up both firsts and both seconds, possibly a third this year, and possibly picks next year. I firmly believe that. Why? No way, man. Why? The Jets, the Jets gave up, the Jets gave up, the Jets moved up three slots. We're talk, if we want to base it on the draft chart for a minute, the Jets move up three damn slots okay. from I'll six to three. And they gave and, and they gave up three, including this and two in their sixth pick. They gave up three top fifty picks, and they gave up a second round pick next year to move up three slots. We would have to move up ten slots. Ten slots. Come on, man. Is I don't, I don't, man. With, how, okay, this ten slots. All right, look, I'll give you that. You're probably right. Now at twelve. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We had a team in the Eagles who just won the Super Bowl with a blunt, a damn a Mitchell, and a, a Jahi. They didn't have an elite running back like a LaShawn McCoy, and they were still able to figure out a way to, to, to beat teams with their quarterback, right? So, again, Let's not sit. None of these guys are Quentin. None of these guys are, these guys are Carson Wentz. The franchise, because Lashawn McCoy, whether we like it or not, at the very end of the day, I love the player, great Hall of Fame player. Hold on, but Lashawn McCoy hasn't changed not one franchise. The hell out of here. He's been to two playoff games and lost both of them bitches. So let's not sit here and say that this guy is a is a. Is a franchise changing back? A quarterback changes franchises, not running backs, man. You a good quarterback. A quarterback, you can have a damn, a damn, uh, the LeGarrette Blunt, a, you know what I'm saying? You can have those type of backs if you have an elite quarterback. You ain't winning nothing with an elite uh, running back. What the hell Adrian Peterson did up in Minnesota? He didn't do shit in Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, man. Let's not sit here and say that McCoy is this world-breaking, franchising-changing talent. He's a great player. But come on, quarterback always trumps running backs, man. That's fact. It trumps run it trumps running backs when you have when you hit and you have that good quarterback. Number one, Carson Wentz is is, in my opinion, head and shoulders beyond this whole damn quarterback draft class. Carson Wentz is Josh Rosen passing ability and Sam Donald's physical gifts in one. That's what Carson Wentz is to me. 
Carson Wentz is Josh Rosen and Sam Donald in one. Sam Donald, in my opinion, gets away with what he gets away with and looked at as a franchise quarterback because of his physical traits. Josh Rosen gets away with what he gets away with and looked at as a franchise quarterback because of his pure passing ability. But none of them possess both traits that Carson uh, Wentz possesses. So when you have when you have a Carson Wentz, what, what, traits does have? what physical traits that you're saying he has? I think, in my opinion, Sam Donald is physically gifted. His pocket presence. His pocket awareness, his size, his mobility, all of them things are the, his physical gifts. Those are his God-given gifts. That's Sam Donald's best credential, in my opinion. As a passer. Doesn't Wentz have the same traits? He, ha yeah, he has the same traits. Wentz is a better passer. Wentz makes better decisions, better consistent decisions than a Sam Donald makes. He's I, he's a better quarterback than Sam Donald. Period. And I I get offended. I, I'm offended even comparing. I'm offended even comparing Carson Wentz to, to, to Sam Donald. I'm I, I, I'd, be, I'd be offended if I'm Carson Wentz. Hold on. Wentz, it's very easy to say that now, Akeem. It's very easy. Why? Because we know what Wentz can do in the league, right? We all know that. Wentz played at one double A. So uh, it seems like a lot of people didn't think he was that good to begin with. I was actually Wentz's biggest fan. I was like, yo, we got to get Wentz, right? So I'm a fan of Wentz. But a lot of those, those physical traits you're talking about, Darnold, is the same traits that Wentz has. It's just that we've seen Wentz in the league, so it's easy for us to say, well, he's way better. You're probably right. He probably is better. But I don't think he's way better. And, again, you're talking about Wentz um, not making bad decisions. I mean, Wentz's first year wasn't peaches and cream. He made a lot of bad decisions his rookie season because he was known for making bad decisions even in college. It was just that his, his physical gifts – made him a damn top two pick. Same thing with Darnold. He's going to be a top two pick, mainly based off of his physical traits. So, again, I think they're similar, but, hey, it is what it is. Hey, man, uh, I, I, I lost connection with this phone, but if, if the people is watching, the people is watching, let us know what y'all think. Comment below. Uh, do you feel we should still trade up? How you feel about the situation? Should we stay at 12? Uh, I know Pierre... Is is adamant about going to get your guy. I'm not mad at that at all. Honestly, it's just we 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 would mortgage based on what the Jets did and based on the reports of us talking to the Colts all week and nothing came to fruition and the Jets just swoop in to to get their their pick. I'm, I'm just a little skeptical about the whole situation, man. That's just that's just my opinion, uh, Pierre. Feels different. Agree to disagree. Let us know what y'all think. Let us know who y'all agree with. You already know, baby. Yo, um, anything else you want to say before we sign off, man? Uh, nah, man. I I, th I think we 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 covered it at the most part. We covered the basis. We don't no no they don't have to go on no hours long drawn drawn conversation. The people know and understand what we're talking about and where we're coming from. It's all about. How we feel is based on your feelings now. What what would you do? How would you feel? What would you do? So that's basically it, man. See, the beautiful thing about when we go is that passion is real, but it's always respectful, man. So that's how it should be, man. Hey, Definitely. let it out. Let it be known and keep it moving, man. But I came. Definitely. Much love to you, man. And uh, we'll much love, big bro. Again, man.